So, first thing I want you to do is to grab your bit of video from the file from the file menu. So, file open and hopefully find your way through to the video that I just gave you. The stop motion sample files. And let's import clip number one. Just click the first JPEG that's in the list. And image sequence, thank you. Don't forget to click image sequence at the bottom of that open oh, dialog box. Well, and when the frame rate comes up, choose 24. Yeah, I just kept it up. And then play that by pressing the space bar. 24 frames per second. Drag that up. Yeah, drag it down to the desk. Just put it as 24. Yeah. Alright. Now that gives us one clip, and you can adjust the view of that with a little. Um, it looks like a little set of mountains down the bottom of your screen. So you can adjust the view of that so you can get more of it into the screen at once. And we're going to import a second clip. If you can't see the timeline, choose motion from the settings over in the top right hand corner of your screen. Then, you would think you went back to open image sequence again to get another video clip in, but that would just give you a new file. So you actually go to the layer menu, video layers, new video layer from file. And we're going to grab two out of there. Just click the first one in the sequence. So that should give you two clips you can play one after another. The second one looks like that. Next, you'll notice that as this plays through that there's a little blue line that appears on top of the screen and that little blue line tells you that it's rendered. So the first time you play it through it will run slowly, the second time you play it through it runs much more smoothly because it's rendered. It's basically kind of built a movie out of it. So let's look at adding a couple of things into this. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to put a bit, bit of a graphic in the front of that video and to do that I'm just going to create a new layer in the layers palette. So go to your layers palette and click the new layer icon and by default that will be just a blank screen. So if you pull the playback head over, over the bit you just created it will be a blank screen. You could fill that with anything you wanted, any graphic, anything. I'm going to fill mine with black for the oh no, let's choose a different color. I'm going to put it on there and then we'll put it up here. So I'm going to fill mine with dark green. It could be. It could be photoshopped manually with a brush, it could be anything you want. Um, 
Option delete fills with a foreground color. Video layers, yeah. New video layer from the file. And then you've got just find two. That's two. Option two. Yeah. And then you just click the first photo. And then you press open. And then it's going to play it. So you've got to drag it to make it all work. Okay, next. That's obviously in the wrong spot, so I'm going to drag that back and put it in front of the existing video. If you drag it, it'll just kind of sandwich in there and push everything across after it. Now, that's given me a bit of video followed by, uh, sorry, a bit of um, a graphic followed by two bits of video. I would like to add some type to go over the top of that. To fit that in, I need to go to video group one and I'm going to add a new video group. So I click near the little film icon to add a new video group. And then grab your text tool and in that new video group we're going to put a title. So using the text tool I'm just going to carefully construct my title. Stop motion, whatever you want to call it. Next. So you've got your title there. It would be nice <coughs> if the title faded out. <coughs> so I'm going to go to this menu, which pops up next to the pair of scissors, and drag the word fade onto your title. And you can see it fades out. <coughs> I'll come and help you in a minute, Tom. Next, since you've done that, you can add a crossfade onto the video from the, the graphic to the video. Between each bit of video, you can drag a crossfade in there. Just pick up the word crossfade and drag it onto the bit you want. Let's play the results of that. Ready for audio? Anybody not get the crossfades to work? Uh, with the fades, you can extend them, yes. So you can grab the the fade, or the for, or you can shorten it. You can even grab the crossfade and do the same thing. So I want to really just click on it and drag the end of it. So next, when that's done, I want to add some audio. And to add some audio, 
you'll find there's a bit of audio on Limbo called Backroads Banjo. Oh, that's different. So add audio. To get that audio, you click on the little music note in the audio track and choose Add Audio once you've copied it from Limbo. You love every second of that. Now you notice that the audio I've chosen is not long enough. Next to that little music note, you can choose duplicate audio. Oh, wow. See, I was ready for that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now I also want to add a an audio effect as well on top of that. So, on Limbo there's a thing called Bad. And to fit that in, you need to add another audio track. Back to the music note, add audio, new audio track. And this one I'm going to add audio called Bad. Not Michael Jackson. There's also Nasty in there if you want. Did it all work? Yep. You'll notice my audio here is too long, so I'm going to click on it and shorten it down. And you can also click on the end of it or right click it and fade out. So I'm going to fade the audio out. <coughs> Like so. Click on the end of the audio or right click the audio and fade out. <coughs> Last but not least, drawing on film. So if we go back to this frame. Click on the video layer itself. So with this frame and this layer, I can now draw on the film, but it works better if you turn on <laughs> Enable Timeline Shortcuts. And you can do any video effect here. So for example, I could choose... Um, one person in my that's better no just teasing I enable timeline shortcuts and then you can use the You can use the shortcut keys to help. Which shortcut? So can we just press like the, the arrows? Does the, the, the arrows go to the next frame? 
etc. So there's my audio, there's my effect over the top of that. Just briefly. Last thing is, oh no, before you output it, a good practice is label these. So my lineup, I'm labeling the layers, they appear in the video. Label two is um, downstairs, um, green, back, etc. So those labels appear in here. Last thing to do is to output the video. The video actually goes out of here in, um, by default, a really good format. Choose um, render video out of that little pop-up menu off to the right-hand side. And go with the default Adobe Media Encoder, click render, and off you go.